Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show. This video, can you turn an EQ mount into an AZ mount? Let's get to it. Okay. Thank you for everybody that subscribed to me. Thank you for everybody that's following me. And thank you for everybody that's on the members channel. Now, you can't change every single equatorial mount to an AZ. Some of them only have one type of... Actually, I want to show you one. I want to show you like a cheap version EQ and why some of them can't. Okay, so if you look at this Asian EQ3, it only has one locking nut here for the latitude adjustment so which means you need to put it on the 90 and what happens is a lot of times it will flop it will go up but there's nothing counter holding it down the other way except for the counterweight where the good mounts eq4s eq5s they actually have a locking nut on each side so wherever it's set at it's actually holding it tight and not just only on one side Okay, so I would say most good EQ3s, EQ4s, EQ5s, and probably EQ6s can turn into the Altazimuth route. However, I'm not totally convinced I like it, okay? Just because, I'll show you what I mean. So here's what you have to do, is to turn this, you gotta turn this guy onto 90. So what we're gonna do is on the front, there's where this locking nut is, uh, let me move this counterweight bar. Let me lock it there. Now you can see there's two hex screws right here. These two hex screws here, we got to take that off first. I mean, you could do it after, but we're just saving a little process because what happens is once it gets to about 70, the internal latitude adjuster is going to hit this front plate. So why not just take it off now? So let me show you guys, let me show you guys how to do that. You just need a Allen wrench and we're just going to loosen it and take it out. So let me put it on fast forward. Okay, so the two hex nuts came out and this thing came out. And here's what I mean. This plate right there, once you keep moving this guy up to here, it's gonna, if that was there, that plate, even taking off this nut, if it's there, it's gonna hit it. So without it being there, you could actually go all the way to 90. That off, I meant put that all the way in. So as you could even see from here, we're just shy of 70 degrees, like 68. And that's where I was saying over here, see with that plate there, you can never get it any higher. To go to 90 is actually right there. And then this would be over here. So what I think what we should do, take this nut off here and then put this plate back on there. Okay, there we go. So let's take a look at it. So as you can see now, 90 degrees, and it's on an altazimuth uh, position. And this can now move this way. And then the other one, this could also move in this one, or in this motion. So that's how you do it. And what's nice about this thing here, if you have one of these and if you could do it like that, now this little nubby thing, the latitude is actually stuck here. So it's not actually gonna fall the other way. Now, not every single mount is gonna be exactly the same, but that's how you have to do it to get it at 90. Okay, so just for testing purposes, let's just say, so here, this is how you do it. So you can move it up and down and left and right 
and now you have an altazimuth mount. This is a light mount, so you could use a, a small counterweight, uh, or depending how much weight it is over here, maybe you can get away if it's a small one, maybe no counterweight at all. Maybe a small, maybe a medium, but let's say you put something bigger. You're probably gonna need a counterweight here to balance it properly. And you also have to balance it this way, because as you can see, here it's too front heavy. There, now it's free, it's loose, uh, and it's a little bit more balanced. But what I'm trying to say, I don't really know if there's really any worth it. Let's say, for instance, if you need a counterweight and you're gonna be moving it now, oops, it's not locked, and you're gonna be moving it on the two axis, I can move this one to this side, okay? I don't understand, I guess it's simpler, left, right, up, and down, but if you are looking at the sky, okay, and you're over, well, up to 100 power is really not that bad. The sky movement is really not moving too quick, but, you know, I did another video called Misconceptions of an Equatorial Mounted Telescope. And one of them, you know, where I, I say in there is people think it's so hard to pull the line. Now you guys know my townhouse. Is Actually, for you new people that have not seen, let's go take a look. Okay, so this is my backyard. It is not huge, okay? And I have a lot of street lights. Uh, you can't see them all right here, but in the dark, you know, there's one across the street. There's one over here. So I got a decent view of almost a 180 south. But if you look at the townhouse, because they're kind of tall, I have nothing on the north. And if you guys watch my videos, I plop. I know that north, south, straight line, like magnetic is like this, west, east. But I just tilt my telescope, this type of angle, like about 15 to 18 from straight magnetic to here and I get very good tracking just guessing okay so what I don't understand and maybe you guys can explain it to me why would anybody want to use an Altazmuth tripod and then I know I have the SV Boney 225AZ to me that's more portable just to look at daytime or the sun or a quick grab and go where I don't need tracking type of thing well it has slow motion controls but what i like about equatorial mount is that like again you just kind of point north i offset a little it takes me literally if it takes me more than 20 seconds i don't know you just gotta learn it but you just plop it tilt it to whatever you know you just gotta kind of look at a compass and see where north is if you can't see it but if you can see in polaris you know you just point that polar uh, scope even if it doesn't have one that hole to the North Pole or the North Star, and then that's it. Now you have accurate tracking, even if it's manual tracking, um, and the Earth only turns on one, one motion, so which means you're tracking only on one control, which is so easy when you're at very high powers, over 150 to 200 power or whatever, you're just losing one control. And sometimes if you guys ever lost a planet and you don't know, you can't find it again, you gotta go all the way back down to your low power, then a little higher power, medium, high power, back again. When you're polar aligned, or like me, I'm guessing I'm polar aligned, I just, since it's only moving in one motion, I just turn it, boom, and I usually find a planet again. So that's what's neat about the equatorial mount. But I'm just saying, me personally, if my Altazimuth had to have a counterweight, like if I put an eight inch SCT, Okay, if I was in this kind of configuration where it's an eight inch SCT, eight inch reflecting telescope, the nine and a quarter SCT, the 10 or something bigger, and I had to put two or three counterweights, what is the difference in having it in the, the regular format and using it on the equatorial mode with tracking? Okay, it just, um, I don't know, unless I was just looking at daytime stuff, 
but normally you would not use a big telescope for daytime stuff anyway. Does that make sense? And I was also thinking of uh, maybe getting a big AZ mount. Now, I know the Rowan has a 75 and 100 AZ, but those are extremely expensive. Like starting, I think in the used market, I've seen for $3,000. So I knew it would be even more. So I don't think I would pay that much, but I know there's like a Hercules AZ mount that's maybe with taxes, almost 600 Canadian. It says it can hold 30 kilograms, which is 66 pounds. I think there's no way they're exaggerating. Uh, like most of the mounts, it probably can do 30 pounds, not 30 kilograms, okay? But anyway, I was thinking getting something like that. So if I want to put like a 12 inch SCT, a 10 or 12 inch reflecting telescope, but then I would need at least, I don't know, two or three 11 pound counterweights on this side. And then I just don't see the point of it being in this configuration, if I had to still carry two or three 11 pounds and the telescope, I'm not getting good tracking on this at all compared to the other way. Now, that's just me. I just don't understand it. If, if, if it could do without the counterweights, then I understand you're saving the weights and that's one less thing. But bigger AZ mounts or the bigger the scope you have, you still need it. So can you guys explain to me if you guys use the AZ mount with counterweights, what is your benefit? Because I don't see a benefit um, personally, and I just prefer to do it on the, again, I just plop it down, put my scope, and I start viewing. I know people can say, well, maybe the angles are going to be a little weird uh, on an equatorial mode, but normally you can just twist your tube uh, and then put the focuser at a better angle. If it's an SCT, you can twist the diagonal, and, and there you go. So it solves the problem. But um, anyway, guys, that's it. So for you guys that don't know how to put in, uh, your equatorial mount to AZ, hope this helps. Uh, the second part is for you guys that have AZ mounts, why do you guys like them? If you have them with counterweights, again, what is the difference of the counterweight compared to the equatorial mount mode? Maybe you guys would change my mind. I don't know. Let me know. Anyway, Joe Jaguar, like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys are on the forums and maybe you've seen somebody ask this question, if you'd like to share my link, um, if you know anybody getting into the hobby, share my channel with them. I got uh, over 250 videos and I appreciate all the great comments that I hear from all the regular people. That, uh, they like my videos, they think I'm funny, uh, I'm doing a great job and all that stuff. Appreciate it, two thumbs up. And uh, finally, I do have members only video once a month I put a video only for the members it only costs 99 cents you do not have to join but you also put your name in the description and they get to see at least one video that the general public doesn't see why not you why not me